Um, good afternoon, Malaysia. How are you guys doing? Good. All right. Well, um, I want to start by uh, uh, issuing a warm welcome uh, to our yeah, media colleagues who are here, here. Uh, some, some of whom traveled, traveled uh, from, uh, from around the region, region just to uh, be here with us today. today. So, thank so thank you guys. guys. We, we always, always appreciate your time. time. And, and of course, a uh, big thank you to our Mi fans who are here <laughs> representing us as well. Um, we have uh, you know, Mi fans everywhere, uh, sometimes as part of the events that we organize, uh, some part, sometimes even uh, uh, fan organized events that we get invited to, so we always like that. Uh, we had a launch, a big launch a few months back, um, all the way in New Delhi, India, and we had fans from Malaysia, from Singapore, from Hong Kong, from Taiwan, all attending, so that's a, that's a huge privilege for us. Uh, and I also want to uh, extend a warm welcome uh, to everybody who's watching on the live stream right now on that camera over there, uh, from also from Singapore, um, from Taiwan, from Hong Kong. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to KL. It's great to be here. Uh, our first launch uh, here in Malaysia uh, was now almost 18 months ago, so we've crossed our first year mark. We're about to cross to cross our first year six month mark. Uh, and it's been an amazing, amazing journey. So uh, thank you guys for being here. And I'm gonna get started. Um, so about four years ago, we designed uh, our first uh, Mi phone. Uh, and what's a Mi phone? A Mi phone was a phone, a smartphone designed for the hardcore fans. Uh, what does that mean? It means the highest imaginable specs at the most affordable price. I remember when we launched Mi One uh, about four years ago, four years and two months, uh, August 16, uh, 2011, uh, it was a phone that nobody could believe in. It was the first dual core smartphone in China, uh, and it was less than half the price of anything that came even close. That established the reputation of the Mi phone, and we've been doing this consistently since. Uh, I can see some Mi 3 fans here. Uh, can I see any Mi 4 eyes? Um, there's a Mi 4i right there, and so the, the <laughs> there's a Mi Note, <laughs> so uh, well represented here. Uh, so that reputation uh, carries on, and we're often uh, still doing many firsts. Uh, you know, we were uh, the first um, larger volume uh, Snapdragon 810 device, for example, to ship with Mi Note Pro earlier this year, and we keep hitting these firsts, and there are more firsts coming. And then two years ago, um, we launched a new product line called uh, the Redmi product line. Um, and it was a new product line that was designed for the youths, uh, as we like to talk about it. They're uh, colorful, they're vibrant, they're young at heart. Uh, and we didn't really know what was going to happen, um, you know, when we launched the second uh, family of phones. You know, we continued to want to ship the best possible hardware, uh, but we set ourselves one uh, constraint, which was a price ceiling, right? And at the time, that price ceiling was a thousand renminbi in China. Um, and we actually surprised ourselves um, with how much we could actually do, even with that constraint of a thousand renminbi. Um, and Redmi is here to stay. Uh, it's been doing incredibly well. Uh, some of these numbers are uh, absolutely jaw-dropping. Uh, just the first series, which was Redmi 1, so Redmi 1 and Redmi 1S, uh, we sold over 32 million uh, of these uh, in, across all of our markets. Uh, Redmi Note, which was and is hugely popular here in Malaysia, uh, over 25 million sold um, and going. Uh, the Redmi 2 series, uh, which we just introduced in the first quarter of this year, already over 15 million units. So, so Redmi has really, really done extraordinarily well. And um, we like to talk about uh, uh, our products, but we prefer to see our users talk about our products. Uh, I love collecting quotes, and this is one of my uh, favorite Redmi quotes. Uh, Naveen wasn't having a very good day, so he decided to smash his, smash his phone, but the phone didn't actually smash. Uh, so, you know, Redmi phones are notoriously resistant. Uh, you know, you can't really scratch the screen no matter what you try. Um, and uh, that's the Redmi line. And we uh, like love to talk about our Redmi line using one of our most famous slogans, which is to always believe that something wonderful is about to happen. It's a cool logo, right? All right. So uh, I want to introduce you to the highest performing uh, uh, Redmi product to date, uh, here today, and that's Redmi Note 2. So that's what we're here to talk about today, uh, Redmi Note 2. So I'm going to spend 
uh, about half an hour talking through everything about this phone, which I love, which I use, and hopefully you guys will have a chance to try it out uh, for yourselves as well. Um, so um, we spent a long time trying to think about how do we, um, what's the tagline for Redmi Note 2? How, how do we, how do we uh, give it a name? How do we give it a slogan that really makes sense? And I've talked about how Redmi was always built to perform, to have high performance under a constraint. But what we were able to achieve with Redmi Note 2 from a performance perspective is well beyond our wildest dreams. And this is why um, this was uh, uh, created, come, uh, created by Siling from our marketing team. She's actually backstage right now. Uh, born to perform because we thought it captured what Redmi Note 2 is all about uh, in, a, in a pretty essential way. Uh, so let me tell you why Redmi Note 2 is born to perform. Um, it was designed for uh, flagship performance. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm not calling Redmi Note 2 a flagship device. Mi Note, Mi Note Pro, Mi 4i, those are flagship devices, right, from the Mi family. But it was designed to offer flagship performance, which is really a first uh, for the Redmi family. It's the first time we've done this. Um, we are shipping Redmi Note 2 with uh, the MediaTek Helio X10 uh, chipset and processor. Um, if you're familiar with the MediaTek product line, uh, MediaTek decided to uh, change uh, its naming um, last year because they had finally achieved a level of performance that was so much higher, that was so superior to any product they'd ever built, that they decided to give it a special name. So they chose Helio. Helio is Greek for sun, um, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and X uh, is the highest end uh, part of this product portfolio. It stands for extreme. So MediaTek designed the Helio X10 processor as a flagship processor. Uh, this is a processor that ships on top-end devices and which we were able to integrate into Redmi Note 2. Uh, typically, uh, in octa-core architectures, uh, um, the Helio X10 processor is, a, is an octa-core processor. Typically, uh, in octa-core architectures, uh, many of you might be familiar with what's, with what's called a big-little approach or a big-little architecture, where you have four big cores, which do all the heavy lifting, and then you have four little cores, which are used for background running tasks and so on, and which are much less uh, powerful, but also much more power efficient. Um, and that's typically the architecture that you'll see uh, on an octa-core processor. Um, MediaTek's uh, Helio X10 is a true octa-core in the sense that all eight cores, um, as you can see here, are 64-bit A53s uh, running at two gigahertz, uh, and they're, they're all the same, right? So of course, uh, uh, you'll use more of these scores as needed depending on, on how computationally intensive the tasks are, um, but uh, it's a true octa-core processor, 64-bit uh, architecture, of course, uh, and this is capable of amazing performance, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, so to summarize before I show you the actual device, uh, Redmi Note 2, um, you couple this amazing processor, octa-core X10 uh, from MediaTek, uh, with two gigs uh, of LPDDR3 dual channel RAM. Uh, it ships with 16 gigs of flash on board, and you can expand with another 32 uh, using an SD card, a micro SD card. A very large battery, 3,000 milliamp hour plus, uh, and of course running EUI 7 uh, as the operating system. Now, um, we did a quick performance comparison uh, uh, to show you um, uh, where Redmi Note uh, 2 typically stands. And what I did here, uh, working closely with Silly and the team, is we chose um, um, some of the most respected top-end devices, you know, flagship products uh, that you are all very familiar with, uh, including um, uh, some of last year's highest, highest uh, performance devices like the Nexus 6 uh, from Motorola in partnership with Google, the Galaxy Note 4, um, the HTC One M9 Plus, which is an amazing product, a Galaxy S5, Xperia M5, LG G3, all of which are products that you're very familiar with. Um, and when you look at the performance, this is on Antutu 573, uh, you can see uh, how amazing uh, Redmi Note 2 stacks up, right? It's a product uh, that even though uh, you wouldn't call it a top-end flagship, it performs at that level, right? And this is the revolution that we were able to achieve, which we did not expect with Redmi Note 2. It's the first time that we have a Redmi device that offers flagship grade performance, which is why this is my favorite slide in this entire presentation. So I'll give you a minute to take another photo if you want. Um, uh, but this is really amazing performance. 
Uh, what's interesting is that when you look at these products that I'm comparing um, uh, here with uh, on the on this performance chart, so if I put them on a table um, where I lay them out side by side and look at the different specs, I'm not going to go through these in detail. But you know, these are extremely high-end devices, right? And they're they're priced uh, at that level, right? Above uh, 1,500 or even above 2,000 ringgit here in Malaysia. Uh, you know, the Motorola Nexus 6 is an example. It wasn't officially launched here, but this is what you can buy for or what you could buy it for when it was launched uh, here in Malaysia, right? It's a very, very uh, strong Snapdragon 805 product. Um, you know, you even have another 805 over there, Galaxy Note 4, right? This is a Snapdragon 805 um, product. This is a spectacularly high-performance product. Uh, and you can see how, just by looking at the M22 score, how uh, Redmi Note 2 is right up there. Right, so uh, we're going to talk about price later, but I just wanted to put this table in front of you to start with to show these are the products that we think um, we want to compare Redmi Note 2 with. We've never done this before. When we launch a Redmi product, we do side-by-sides with other products in this sort of mid-end category. We've never done it with a flagship, a comparison with flagship products before. Um, and I'll, I'll come back to the other specs. So, of course, uh, Gaming on Redmi Note 2 is uh, is amazing, right? There's absolutely no room to be desired on performance, even with the most demanding 3D games. Um, and you'll try it for yourself later today. Now, uh, young at heart, what does it look like? Um, well, I've got one right here, and I'll power it up for you. Well, this is this is uh, Redmi Note 2. We'll have more photos later. I have uh, some other colors as well. Uh, anyways, so um, it's uh, it pops with color. Uh, it's uh, it's more youthful. Uh, it's it's uh, you know it's more fresh uh, than any of our other products, even in our flagship line. So this is the uh, the blue version. Um, uh, here is the uh, same uh, blue version, but looking at the back, um, this is the the, the polycarbonate uh, matte uh, finish. Uh, this is a removable cover. But what's interesting is that it actually looks. Uh, for a second, is that it actually looks uh, so much like Mi 4i, right? Um, I actually have uh, two versions here. I have um, Redmi Note 2 uh, on your right and uh, Mi 4i on your left. And you can see that they look like cousins, right? Except the device on your left is a flagship Mi 4i, and the device on your right uh, is Redmi Note 2. But it's where you've used, we've used the same polycarbonate matte finish uh, on the back of the device. Um, which is uh, uh, very resistant to fingerprints and grease and so on and so forth. Um, and it's beautiful. The difference being, of course, uh, that this is a Redmi product. And also, this is a removable cover. Um, so you can access uh, the back of the device um, by taking out the cover. And I'll show you more about removable covers later. Um, and you can see, look at the size of this battery, right? 3,060 milliamp hours. It's a huge battery. Uh, you can tell how much I love this device already. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, this is the pink uh, color. And uh, for the pink version of Redmi Note 2, um, we like to show it with a rosé uh, theme or the rosé UI, which is part of Mi UI 7. I'll come back to that in a little bit. It looks absolutely beautiful. This is actually fashion inspired. There's a whole story behind it, which maybe I'll share with you later today. Uh, and then this is the uh, sexy dark gray, uh, which is uh, uh, very, very low profile. You can see the detail of the red buttons here. It's actually when the red buttons really, really pop. Um, it looks beautiful with that hint of red. Uh, and I'll show you another view of the dark gray version. Uh, and what we have here is the, uh, this is called the High Life UI. It's one of the, the default themes that MIUI 7 ships with. Uh, it's kind of a very sophisticated uh, black, brown, gold uh, theme that's beautiful as well. Uh, and you'll get to see that later today. It looks, it, it looks like it's made for, uh, for, this, uh, for this color product. Um, and uh, this is the white version, um, which gives you a better, a better uh, sense of the shape, um, uh, running the ocean breeze theme. And then here you can see actually really well how thin uh, Redmi Note 2 is. It's, it's incredibly thin. It's uh, just over eight millimeters uh, in thickness uh, and, and with a removable back, right, which is pretty incredible. Um, and you've got the yellow version here on the right also with the high life theme. Um, and then all of them together, the full suite uh, of Redmi 2 products um, together. This one looks pretty good. I'll show you another good photo op. Right. Here we 
There you go. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. So, um, and um, oh, here's more colors. And this one, actually, you can, because of the radial distribution here, you can see a uh, detail that I did not point out earlier, which is how the camera is spec in the middle, right? So perfect, perfect symmetry. Uh, some people really like that. I personally think it's, uh, it's great. It looks really nice uh, for a larger device. Uh, more balanced, right? So this uh, rounded, uh, centered look. Uh, and yet another view of it, uh, this one with the gray, dark gray model, uh, dead center here, um, and with the highlight theme, uh, here you can see the, the Google widget with a new logo, which uh, looks pretty gorgeous. I think they did a great job with it. Um, and uh, so that's Redmi Note 2 for you guys. And just one more look. <laughs> uh, and here again, you can see uh, how thin it is, uh, the detail on the stainless steel buttons. Uh, so it's a great, great, great product. What do you think? Okay, let's keep going. So um, it feels really great in the hand. Uh, it's only 160 grams, which is quite light uh, for a five and a half inch device. I'll do a quick comparison in a second. Um, as, as I said, it's just over eight millimeters in, in thickness, which means it's 13% thinner and actually 25 grams lighter than the original Redmi Note, right? So of course we continuously improve and um, a 25 grams lighter is actually quite a bit um, compared to our previous product. Uh, so it feels really, really great in the hand. Uh, here's another comparison. Uh, I, I don't think I would be myself if I didn't do an iPhone comparison uh, in my presentation. So this is what Silly uh, and I did here. Um, so, uh, uh, so on the left is Redmi Note 2. On the right is iPhone 6S Plus. Um, and it's actually really interesting when you hold them together. Uh, the difference is actually pretty remarkable. First of all, uh, Redmi Note 2 is quite a bit narrower, right? So it's easier to grip, um, 76 uh, versus almost 78 millimeters. Um, uh, it's also shorter uh, by about uh, six millimeters, uh, which also makes a difference. Um, and because the dimensions are smaller uh, and the screen is the same size, you get a better what we call screen to body ratio. So it's uh, the percentage of the front screen that's actually used by the screen, right? So that means Redmi Note 2 makes better use of the front surface of the device uh, relative to the screen. So it, the, basically the the, the, the front of the device wears the screen a little bit better. Uh, and more, most importantly, it's 17% lighter, uh, 160 grams for Redmi Note 2 versus 192 grams for the iPhone 6S Plus, right? So um, uh, this 32 gram difference makes a real difference when you're holding the device, right? It's actually, th there were phones not too long ago that weighed <laughs> not much more than 32 grams, right? So it's a full like feature phone difference in, in, in weight. Um, so from an ergonomics perspective, Redmi Note 2 really does check all the boxes. It's a great device. Um, and uh, while I can't, I can't decide which color I like best, so it's good that we have replaceable back covers um, for Redmi Note 2 as well, uh, as was the case with some of our previous products. Um, the, um, well, of course, the phone itself looks really good, but we think that people holding it look even better, um, whether they're, um, you know, um, at the university campus or just finishing uh, a workout and kind of checking out uh, how they did or checking uh, their uh, social media after the workout, uh, maybe in, in between breaks at sports practice um, or, uh, or taking a selfie. Um, so it's, uh, it's a phone that makes you look really good. And, and the, uh, the, the center camera in the back is actually a big part of that. Uh, that actually really adds to the look uh, when somebody is looking at you holding the phone. Um, now let's talk about uh, camera. So camera is probably uh, the, my, my favorite uh, feature of this device, uh, despite the fact that I love how fast the processor is, because I am a camera, a uh, big camera fan. I, I love taking photos. I don't call myself a photographer, but one day I will become one. Uh, so I want to talk about the camera on, uh, on Redmi Note 2. So it's a 13 megapixel Samsung sensor um, with a five element lens uh, aperture uh, as large as f2.2, which gives you really good uh, you know, um, uh, out of focus effects on some of your photos with a lot of light. Uh, but most importantly, and this is a pretty big deal, um, phase detection autofocus, uh, or a short, uh, a short PDAF. Uh, and this is a pretty big deal, so I wanna spend a little bit of time explaining phase detection autofocus to you guys. This makes a huge difference when you're taking photos. Um, so, uh, Phase detection autofocus is a technology that's commonly used in DSLRs. Uh, in fact, uh, it was very talked about uh, about uh, two or three years ago when it first came out. And basically, it, it does a one-time calculation 
to adjust uh, the lens with focus. Uh, and it's just a one-time calculation that's on in a fraction of a second, in fact, in a tenth of a second. Uh, and it allows the camera to focus really, really quickly. In fact, the bottleneck is not the algorithm for calculating the optimal focus. The bottleneck is actually the servo motor on the lens to reposition the lens in the right place. So in, in theory, it could actually be even faster than that. Um, so um, to explain a little bit, uh, most smartphones use what's called contrast autofocus. Um, and basically, this is what kind of what, what it feels like, um, as you're already very familiar with, right? So the way autofocus works is it starts uh, contrast autofocus. It starts off with a blurry image, and then it basically goes on, on a little hunt where it just tweaks the focus and sees if it got a little bit better by looking at the edges. Did the contrast at the edges improve? And then do a little bit more, do a little bit more, do a little bit more. And what it's doing, it's kind of hunting for a sweet spot with the highest contract before saying, we're, we're there, we're focused. Uh, and in this sort of hunting process, it might even go under or over the right focus point a couple of times, which is kind of why you see it, you know, it, it's sort of converging. Uh, and you can really see that clearly. So it's kind of like a trial and error process that takes up some time. Again, particularly because you have, a, you have physical parts moving, right? You may not see this, but when you're focusing, you actually have a physical uh, component moving inside of the camera. Um, so uh, uh, phase detection autofocus, or PDAF, uh, is pretty different. Uh, what it does is it analyzes two fixed images um, and based on the difference, uh, the distance between the same pixel uh, or a pixel of the same object between the two images, it makes a quick calculation. It knows exactly what the focus should be. Um, and uh, it's like I said, it's a one, one time calculation that it does very, very quickly. Um, I actually grabbed this last night from a specialized DSLR website that compares um, a contrast focus, which is more traditional. It shows this kind of back and forth, you know, uh, trial and error uh, uh, mode comparing it to phase detection autofocus where as it says here, it compares two offset images of the subject. If they don't line up, the subject is not in any focus. The system provides much more information than contrast autofocus. The distance between the images tells the camera how much it needs to refocus by. Uh, and the reason why is that uh, you have two areas of the sensor which see the same object from a slightly different angle, uh, which is why these are actually two different images. And based on the distance between the two, uh, it knows exactly what the focus should be. Now. Um, what does this look like in practice? So I'll show you uh, a video here, which first shows uh, Redmi Note 2 just by itself, and you can see uh, exactly how quickly PDAF is, and then it compares Redmi Note 2 with a phone that uses standard contrast autofocus. Let's take a look. How quick that was? Sometimes you can't even see it, it's so quick. Redmi Note 2 on the left, on the right, and then other phone on the left. See that, right? So you can see that trial and error, which we're all very familiar with, um, but you know, PDAF is a completely different experience, so it is, it is a lot better. Um, so it focuses in, in 0.1 second, and, and it could be even faster, in fact, uh, if you could have a faster motor, which is a, you know, physic, a physical limitation, different story. Um, so it really makes all the difference when you're taking fast moving you know, photos in particular. You will lose less shots uh, with, uh, with this focus capability. Now, how does it compare to the iPhone 6S Plus? Well, uh, iPhone 6S Plus actually uses the same uh, phase detection autofocus technology. They call it focus pixels. Uh, which other people have written about. Uh, and so it's a very similar technology, uh, uh, and I want to show you a side-by-side -side on this one. Let's show the video. It's hard to tell the difference, right? Can't really see it. We're going to take a closer look. Slow it down so you can really see it. And Redmi Note 2 actually 
beats it by a small fraction of a second, which honestly doesn't really matter. Uh, but the point here is to say we've really put attention on the camera experience um, that brings Redmi Note 2 to a flagship level, right? I mean, we all know how much, uh, uh, you know, how, how high quality, uh, um, you know, Apple products are, and, and we do think that we are at the same level on a product that's not even a flagship product. So we're very, very proud of that. So that's a phase detection autofocus. I hope I didn't bore you with uh, all, the, all the talk. Uh, and of course, a five megapixel front camera, which uh, comes with the Beautify function, which of course is what we've uh, uh, become pretty well known for. Uh, Beautify uh, is this technology that uh, guesses your, your age and gender, and then based on that, it decides what filters to apply to the skin, you know, to smoothen the skin, sort of reduce blemishes, and so on and so forth. Uh, it makes everyone uh, just a tad younger, which is uh, always a good thing. Uh, and some of the, I'll just show you some photos that uh, we captured with Redmi Note 2. Some of these were captured by our team members, uh, some by fans. Um, so this is uh, a very fast exposure, as you can see here, uh, 1 over 2,000 with um, uh, very fast shutter, as well, very uh, uh, big shutter as well. You can see the detail. It's really, really good detail uh, on the grass. Uh, it's a beautiful image. Um, on this one, this, so this is an HDR photo uh, that's also taken with a pretty fast shutter. What's interesting here, though, is uh, as you probably know, HDR works by taking you know, two or three exposures and then combining those exposures. What our HDR algorithm does, however, is it very carefully chooses what parts of each of those exposures it uses to compose the final shot. What you can see here is that the birds are frozen in the air. And if you take two exposures of this image, without any doubt, the birds will have moved, right? Um, and our algorithm works well enough that it knows how to compensate for these things while still taking advantage of the difference in exposure that you get uh, from HDR. And then you get these beautiful images uh, that have great contrast, very, very saturated, uh, so they look great, um, and they work well even if there's a moving subject. Uh, this is uh, one taken with very, very little light, uh, and you can see that it's pretty sharp. Uh, you can see how slow um, the shutter is on this one. So pretty sharp, not very grainy. Um, so Redmi Note 2 uh, uh, camera really works well even in lower light conditions. You should try it for yourself. Uh, of course, works great in uh, bright sunlight, um, which is this shot. Um, this is another HDR shot taken around uh, sunset. Uh, and you can see how great this one looks. I think Joyce uh, took this one. Um, so it looks great as well. Uh, another HDR shot, I think this one is from Joshua uh, of the the Twin Towers here in KL. Uh, this is uh, one taken with, this is a selfie, so this is one taken with the front camera. Uh, and you can see the Beautify effect here, uh, uh, you know, uh, working pretty well. Um, and uh, this is another one, another selfie where you can also see um, uh, how beautiful the lighting looks, right? Particularly in a sunset situation. This is Karen from our Singapore office. Um, and she was just taking a selfie. All right. Hi, Karen. Okay, uh, so um, what, we've, uh, what we've done um, uh, now looking at the display, uh, I wanna talk about the display, is we've really optimized it for what we think are the key use cases that the youth, right, this target audience cares about. Um, so one of them is reading, um, you know, and I'll talk to you more about that, but reading is very, very important, uh, you know, revising your notes, uh, looking at documents and so on and so forth. So how can we make reading uh, as good as possible on this screen? We've optimized it for night usage, uh, you know, whether you're at home or you know, out at night and you're Instagramming or you're doing anything uh, late at night, how can we optimize the display for late night usage in a darker environment? Uh, and also optimize for readability in bright, bright sunlight when you're outdoors. So there's some technologies that are part of Redmi Note 2 that I'll describe briefly that attack these uh, use cases. But before I say that, let's just zero in on the display itself. It's a full HD 1080p display. Uh, 401 ppi where well over the threshold where you're no longer able to see above which you're no longer able to see pixels right so uh it's a resolution above which it, it pretty much doesn't make any sense to go because uh, you're you're past what the retina uh, what the human eye can see uh, so the first technology is a sunlight display so sunlight display is a is a technology that we originally introduced uh, as part of uh, me 4 i it was a high-end uh, feature that we added uh, it was actually hardware and software based, uh, and it works really, really well. We've ported uh, sunlight display technology back uh, down to the Redmi family as well, and it works almost in the same way. Uh, it basically adjusts contrast in real time, so when you go outside, uh, things look much more readable, uh, especially images are much more easy to see uh, on your phone. So that's sunlight display. Uh, we rarely give something a name, but we are such big fans of sunlight display that we decided to give it a name. 
Uh, then we have uh, this technology called night display. You, you, you for sure have experienced a situation where you're, you're, you know, you're in, in bed or you're in the dark and the display just feels a bit too, too uh, bright, even though you have auto brightness set on. So night, night display uh, is, uh, is an offset to uh, auto brightness that reduces uh, the brightness of the display five times, um, as low as uh, one CD per square meter. Uh, and the advantage of luminous course, is, is uh, reducing eye strain. Uh, it just makes it more comfortable for the eyes. And paired with night mode is reading mode, which is a toggle that you can easily turn on. It reduces the amount of blue light that, uh, that you see. So the screen doesn't look as blue, and it ends up even looking a little bit yellowish, as you can see here. Um, you, may or may know you may or may not know this, but of all the different colors in the spectrum of light blue is one that you don't want to be looking at too much at night. Um, it, it actually has a, a physiological effect where it, 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 it uh, affects melatonin secretion. And melatonin is something that you need for sleep. Uh, some of us take it when we're trying to sleep. Um, so it, it reduces uh, uh, potentially the amount of, if you're staring at a blue light for a long time, it reduces the amount of melatonin in your blood. Uh, so that means you don't sleep as well. Um, so we said, well, reading mode uh, will try to remove some of that blue light uh, so that it doesn't um, uh, get in the way. Uh, so those, those were some of the key hardware features. I'll come back to them in a second when I summarize. Um, but I just want to say a couple of words about MIUI 7. Uh, MIUI 7 is the brand new version of our operating system, of course, based on Android. Uh, we launched it uh, just in August in beta, and it's just gone uh, into stable. So uh, most of you who have uh, Xiaomi phones have already downloaded it. It's a great, great improvement uh, over uh, previous versions. And it starts with these beautiful default UIs, as we call them, or, or themes. Um, uh, my favorite one, without a doubt, is Rosé, which is this fashion-inspired theme uh, that has all these really cool little details. You know, as you as you start using it, you start noticing all the you know icons and some of the surfaces in the apps and so on. And it's really really cool. Uh, it's very nice. Uh, I think it looks great on any phone. Uh, I don't think it's just for girls. Um, I think it looks fantastic. Um, this is uh, Pink Blush. So Pink Blush is a similar idea to Rosé, but it's a bit younger um, than Rosé. Uh, it looks particularly good. I think the Google logo feels right at home in there, uh, by the way. And uh, it's another of these default UIs. It's right there when you start up the phone, it'll ask you to choose one of these default UIs. Uh, and of course, you can download any themes on top of that. Uh, this is Ocean Breeze, uh, which is this really chilled out, uh, you know, bluish um, uh, uh, theme or UI that looks great on any color devices, particularly the white and the dark gray. Uh, and then, as I mentioned earlier, this is High Life. Uh, I started giving it a cool name, which is this darker, more elegant, sort of uh, brownish uh, gold um, UI. So these are all default UIs as part of MIUI 7. Uh, and this is what they all look like together. Uh, these are all the lock screens, by the way. So this is when the phone is locked, and we've chosen images very, very carefully for what the lock screen is going to look like. Uh, we've also launched uh, this feature called Daily Lock Screen. Uh, and what daily lock screen does uh, is it shows you a surprise photo on your lock screen. So when you power on your display, uh, every day at midnight, it will put a new photo for you. It's a surprise photo. You don't, you don't know what it is until you see it. And these are award-winning photos from well-known photographers that we've licensed and we've made available to you. Uh, they are not available in your gallery or anything like that. They only appear on your lock screen. Uh, and like I said, it's a, it's a surprise every single day. So they look uh, really, really beautiful. That's part of MIUI 7 as well. Uh, MIUI 7 has a lot of performance tweaks. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. Um, but basically, what we're always trying to do is make your phone more responsive. And MIUI 7 comes with a whole lot of improvements to do that. And I'll mention one example, uh, which is what we've done to accelerate the launching of an app. So when you, you know, the second that you press to launch that app, how quickly does it feel like it's launching for you? And we've, we've moved a bunch of things around, uh, but basically we've brought the animations forward. Uh, the animations now happen, meaning the, the actual um, icon becoming the app, that kind of zoom-like uh, animation. That happens while the data is loading. We've managed to tweak it quite a bit, and that shaves off you know, fractions of a second, which are pretty noticeable. Right? So um, MIUI 7 just feels faster. You, you almost can't tell why or how, but it feels faster. Um, it's as a result of a lot of these optimizations that we've made. Um, uh, so something that we also do is we identify when the second the user is starting an app, and we basically ramp up the CPU immediately, even the, before the app requests it, so that uh, the app has more CPU available to itself immediately on MIUI 7. So that contributes to, again, things feeling a little bit faster when you launch. 
right? So uh, you combine all these things, and we have 30% faster startup time, uh, which is one area that we focused on, which is very, very noticeable. Um, battery is another area that we really care about. MIUI 7 excels in battery life. Uh, we don't really know, but it's true that almost half of uh, our power users in our phones comes from apps that are running in the background, which is uh, pretty outrageous because you're not actually using them uh, actively. Uh, so you know, even when your phone is doing around not doing anything, it may actually be consuming a tremendous amount of battery power. Uh, and there's a lot of things that drain battery that you might not even know about. Uh, you know, for example, um, uh, you know, with uh, you know, when the app is waking up the CPU, when you're connecting to the internet, when the GPS is being used, even in, by a background app, scanning for Wi-Fi networks, you know, all these things take a huge amount of battery. Um, so what we've done uh, is a few. One of the few things that we've done uh, with MIUI 7 is we force apps to align their CPU wake-up cycles. You know, an app is constantly asking the CPU to do something for itself. And when it needs the CPU, it says, OK, I need some CPU time just for me. And it gets a small fraction of a second, you know, maybe a few milliseconds of CPU time. What we now do, and it's particularly important in an eight-core device, uh, is we force the, the CPU usage to be in the same window. Right? So that means you wake up the CPU less often, and that saves a ton of battery. And a ton of other small uh, improvements that we've done like this, uh, and we actually have 10% better battery life on MIUI 7, which is a ton. Right? So it means you might actually get a full two hours or three hours of battery uh, on your phone, which might be the difference between life and death in some cases. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, this other one, this other feature, which uh, we're just previewing, we're not actually rolling it out yet, is called uh, Baby Album. Uh, what Baby Album does, that was Manu Jain, our India general manager, uh, it, will, it will find uh, photos uh, of babies in your gallery automatically. Um, it, it identifies using face recognition technology what it thinks a baby is. Um, and um, it will find those pictures, it will group them together, and it allows you uh, to set a daily lock screen uh, feature that shows you um, your baby photos in one place uh, on your lock screen. So you get a surprise photo of your baby on your lock screen or your child uh, every single day. Um, so uh, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so the animation takes a bit of time on this one. So that's a uh, uh, baby album, um, as we call it. So the next feature I want to talk about is... Uh, it's a feature called uh, XSL font. Let's go, go back one slide. To, uh, it's called XSL, XXL text. So a common problem uh, on phones, even phones with big displays, is that some people really do need a very large font. And they just cannot see um, if the font is not set to very large. What happens, however, uh, when you, you know, increase the size of the font uh, on all of these, uh, on many of these devices, like uh, the iPhone or, or uh, some of the Samsung models, it, it just looks off. Right, like it clearly looks like someone didn't give this enough thought. Um, I don't know how come my <laughs> phone number is 911. <laughs> um, but someone like just didn't give this enough thought and kind of didn't do a very good job, honestly. Uh, this, this is not acceptable. Uh, it's uh, absolutely not usable, uh, certainly in my opinion or I think anyone's opinion. So we've, we've really put a lot of thought uh, into um, uh, building a much better font size. And we've actually made a much, an even larger uh, font size than any phone you'll ever see uh, with XXL. And what we've done here is we've actually had to change a lot of the layout from all of our core system apps, from the contacts app to the messaging app to everything else, so that it can accommodate a very, very large font size and it doesn't look weird. So you can see, for example, in this case, if you compare between here and here, how the bubble is larger, how the text box is you know, double the height. Um, and you'll see in many of the apps that we've even moved around some of the labels, uh, really, to make room for bigger text. Uh, so some of the many, many uh, layout changes that we've done, uh, which I don't have to go in detail, but basically every core system had to be redesigned to accommodate XXL. So that's MIUI 7. Uh, there's so many other exciting things about it, which I can mention to you guys later. Uh, but MIUI 7 is very, very customizable. It's what we that's why we call it yours by design. Um, we focus on customization. That's something that our users really, really love, uh, both hardcore users and new users. And I'm going to come back uh, to Redmi Note 2. Uh, so these are the key specs uh, presented very colorfully. Uh, so I've talked about the Helio X10 processor. So it's the flagship grade processor 
Um, I've talked about uh, uh, the display, uh, two gigs of RAM. One thing that I did not mention, of course, it's 4G dual SIM, uh, as all of our phones are. It supports 802.11 AC uh, Wi-Fi, which you, again, will not find in any phone that's not a flagship these days. Um, uh, so really uh, a hell of a product, uh, 13 megapixel of camera, is my, my favorite uh, feature alongside the processor. Um, so here it is. One, actually, I, I have a more beautiful background, so I'll show you that in a sec. Oh, one more feature that I didn't talk about. Uh, it's the infrared uh, sensor. So uh, Redmi Note 2 has an infrared sensor uh, right here uh, that basically allows you to use your Redmi Note 2 as a, as an, as a universal remote controller. Uh, and it'll pair with thousands of different models of all, all types of devices, TVs, set-top boxes, air conditioning systems, home theaters, uh, you know, stand-up fans, and so on and so forth. Not me fans, but fans <laughs> like ventilators. Um, and uh, with some luck, I guess you might be able to remote control an e-fan as well. Um, and um, anyways, so um, uh, now yes, so this is a good photo. We can take one. So born to perform, that's Redmi Note 2, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Two more hands. Um, so we actually made a video um, uh, for you guys about uh, about. Uh, 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 oh, there's one more. There's a, there's another slide. There's another slide. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have an even more beautiful slide. Um, so we um, you know we, we kind of think that born to perform has this double meaning. Of course, uh, one is is uh, the device, right? The hardware, the software combination, and so on and so forth. But uh, you know we're also in a, in a in a day and age where you know our 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 younger people uh, are obsessed about performing, about doing well in school, about learning what they you know want to learn, about pursuing their passions and so on and so forth. So we we kind of made a video that talks about that second meaning, and obviously how Redmi Note two comes into the life uh, of those uh, youths as well. So let's uh, let's roll the video.
right. Okay. Um, well, speaking of uh, always believe that something wonderful is about to happen, um, let's talk about um, the one thing that I haven't touched on yet, which is price. That's right. Let's talk about price. Um, so as I usually do, I'll come back to this uh, comparison table uh, where I talk about how wonderful um, uh, the Redmi Note 2 is. Um, and what I'll emphasize here once again, go back one slide, please. Uh, what I'll emphasize here uh, once again is um, uh, is Redmi Note 2 uh, put alongside a bunch of, of its colleagues in the flagship category, right? We believe that Redmi Note 2 is the first Redmi product that we've ever made that compares beautifully uh, with some of these flagship products out there. And you can look at the comparisons a little bit more. You can look at things like battery size, um, uh, screen resolution. You know, there are some 2K products over here, um, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, Redmi Note 2 is a 1080p uh, uh, device with an amazing display, uh, under two score above 50,000. Um, and the comparison group here, the, the peer group, is in, you know, anywhere from uh, 1599 for the M5, you know, all the way up to uh, above 2500 uh, for the Nexus 6, um, uh, about 2500 for the Galaxy Note 4, and so on and so forth. Um, so it is an expensive product uh, a group uh, to compare yourselves with. Um, but uh, of course, uh, this is a Redmi product, uh, and what people expect from us are amazing prices. Um, so uh, with the price, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Let's stay, let, oh, I think there's an animation, uh, the animation automatic, auto advances. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, but we'll have a beautiful slide for you coming up where you can take some photos. Uh, so um, 649 ringgit uh, is the price here in Malaysia. We'll be announcing the price in the other markets as well today. Um, and uh, uh, this is what it stacks up. Um, and here is the photo that I was looking for. And actually, let's go to the next one. Uh, let me come back to this one in a second. Or you want a photo of this one too? Okay, fine. <laughs> The photo that I am waiting for is coming up next. <laughs> okay, uh, so on availability, uh, Redmi Note 2 uh, is our big attraction for the 11-11 uh, uh, Singles Day. Uh, we're gonna be taking uh, pre-orders in some markets and orders in some other markets immediately on uh, November 11th. So you have all the details uh, of that uh, shortly, but 11th of November is the date. It's a very important date for us uh, because of Singles Day. So uh, that's the launch date uh, for Redmi Note 2, um, uh, which is, uh, of course, next week. Um, so 11th of November. And uh, here's a, this is the slide that I was looking for. So you can take many photos on this one. All right, so, uh, so that was Redmi Note uh, 2, guys. And um, I want to thank you all uh, for coming. Um, thank you, uh, especially to those who have flown in uh, from outside of town uh, to be here with us. Um, it's time to go experience Redmi Note 2 outside. Um, so it's right behind you over there. So please go take a look. Uh, that's all we have for today. Hope you had fun. Thank you very much.